Ladies and gentlemen of the Shred Gaming Silicon video, let us further discuss the PlayStation 4's CPU. We've been discussing this quite a bit recently, but this one is sparked by recent comments by one of the developers behind Project Cars, and we'll go into that in just a moment. I've also written an article concerning this, so you guys can check it out if you want, say, diagrams and links and all of the other jazz that you'd expect. So last time, of course, we were discussing the PS4 CPU. It was in reference to the Substance Engine, which is an add-on, a middleware, if you will, for game engines such as Unity, UDK, and so on, and basically helps to generate um, compressed textures. Now, the PS4 manages to do this at 14 megabytes per second, the Xbox One at 12, and an i7 for the PC manages 26. I've got a video out if you want to check that out. It's also got relevant links in there. But fast forwarding on today, and Andy Tudor, who serves as Project Car's creative director, was doing a short interview. He said, and I quote, It's been challenging splitting the renderer further across threads in an even more fine grained manner. Even splitting already small tasks into two 3ms chunks millisecond, um, the single core speed is quite slow compared to a high-end PC. Though, so splitting across cores is essential. The bottlenecks are mainly in command list building. We now have this split up of up to four cores in parallel. There are still some bottlenecks to work on with memory flushing to garlic. Even after changing to LCUE, the memory copying is still significant. Now, garlic is one of the uh, memory buses that is inside the PlayStation 4. There's actually three of them, as I said. One is Onion, another Onion Plus, and the other is, well, garlic. The garlic bus has a full memory bandwidth and doesn't snoop the CPU's level 1, level 2 cache. The Onion bus, meanwhile, does snoop the CPU's level 1 and level 2 cache. And then finally, you've got the Onion Plus, which actually bypasses the GPU caches and shares the memory bandwidth. And apparently the CPU bus is about 20 gigabytes per second. So this is pretty much in keeping with what a lot of games developers have been speaking about right at the moment. It's still fairly early because there's still quite a few benchmarks and comments that haven't been exactly fleshed out with games developers, but it definitely seems that, okay, the AMD Jaguar's processors are pretty powerful for what they are, but they're certainly not going to be able to keep up with something like a high-end desktop, which is expected. I mean, after all, if you look at what the Jaguar is, that does make some sense. So what does this mean going forward? Well, rather obviously, in cases like this, you're definitely going to have to be, well, the games developers are definitely going to have to be a bit careful of what they're doing with CPU utilization. Interestingly enough, this does tie in some with what Microsoft have actually been stating for a while. Um, you may remember interviews with, well, several guys actually at Microsoft, and they actually stated that the thing they got the biggest boost with isn't actually even the GPU clock speed increase, it was the CPU clock speed increase. In other words, quite simply put, they were CPU bound. And I emphasize the word they because their CPU, uh, or their GPU, is considerably slower than that of the PlayStation 4, so it could end up being that the PS4 is definitely going to have to rely upon compute, which of course is basically the GPU handling some of the work for the CPU. Certainly for things such as physics, um, AI, and so on and so on, you guys know the list by now, it could definitely help. But also bear in mind that that means that you're going to have to really dig in deep to the the GPU, and you certainly don't want to flood it with com compute commands at the risk of upsetting the graphics. And obviously, the PS4 does have a very robust queue structure, which will definitely help for that. But even so, it doesn't mean that it's an endless well. As far as I'm aware, the LCUE is a driver level shader resource update engine. And the idea behind this is it actually improved the CPU performance and is actually integrated right into the SDK of the PS4. So it's clear that 
Despite the fact that the PS4 definitely does have an advantage over the Xbox One, there are certainly some areas where it's lacking, or at least where developers right now are finding it lacking, or at least somewhat of a challenge in certain areas. No doubt we're going to find a lot more about this in the next couple of months, I imagine, as developers are feeling not only more educated in terms of what the next generation consoles have to offer, but also a lot freer to speak about it as NDAs become slowly uh, more relaxed over time, of course, and therefore developers will feel that, okay, it's okay to say something, um, which obviously for us guys in the tech, interested in tech, is going to be pretty damn cool indeed. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.